Wilhelm Richard Wagner, the 22nd of May 1813, the 13th of February 1883, was a German composer, theatre director, polemicist, and conductor who is chiefly known for his operas. Unlike most opera composers, Wagner wrote both the libretto and the music for each of his stage works. Initially establishing his reputation as a composer of works in the romantic vein of Karl Maria von Weber and Giacomo Meyerbeer, Wagner revolutionized opera through his concept of the, the Gesamtkunstwerk, by which he sought to synthesize the poetic, visual, musical and dramatic arts, with music subsidiary to drama. He described this vision in a series of essays published between 1849 and 1852. Wagner realized these ideas most fully in the first half of the four opera cycle Der Ring des Nibelungen. His compositions, particularly those of his later period, are notable for their complex textures, rich harmonies and orchestration, and the elaborate use of leitmotifs, musical phrases associated with individual characters, places, ideas, or plot elements. His advances in musical language, such as extreme chromaticism and quickly shifting tonal centers, greatly influenced the development of classical music. His Tristan und Isolde is sometimes described as marking the start of modern music. Wagner had his own opera house built, the Beirut Fest Spielhaus, which embodied many novel design features. The Ring and Parsifal were premiered here and his most important stage works continue to be performed at the annual Beirut Festival, run by his descendants. His thoughts on the relative contributions of music and drama in opera were to change again, and he reintroduced some traditional forms into his last few stage works, including Die Meistersinger von Nürnberg. Until his final years, Wagner's life was characterized by political exile, turbulent love affairs, poverty and repeated flight from his creditors. His controversial writings on music, drama and politics have attracted extensive comment, notably, since the late 20th century, where they express anti-Semitic sentiments. The effect of his ideas can be traced in many of the arts throughout the 20th century, his influence spread beyond composition into conducting, philosophy, literature, the visual arts and theatre. Chapter 1, Biography Chapter 2 Section 1, Early Years Richard Wagner was born to an ethnic German family in Leipzig, who lived at number 3, the Brühl in the Jewish Quarter. He was baptized at St. Thomas Church. He was the ninth child of Karl Friedrich Wagner, who was a clerk in the Leipzig Police Service, and his wife, Johanna Rosina, the daughter of a baker. Wagner's father Karl died of typhus six months after Richard's birth. Afterwards, his mother Johanna lived with Karl's friend, the actor and playwright Ludwig Geer. In August 1814 Johanna and Geer probably married, although no documentation of this has been found in the Leipzig church registers. She and her family moved to Geer's residence in Dresden. Until he was 14, Wagner was known as Wilhelm Richard Geer. He almost certainly thought that Geyer was his biological father. Geyer's love of the theater came to be shared by his stepson, and Wagner took part in his performances. In his autobiography Mein Leben Wagner recalled once playing the part of an angel. In late 1820, Wagner was enrolled at Pastor Wetzel's school at Pazendorf, near Dresden, where he received some piano instruction from his Latin teacher. He struggled to play a proper scale at the keyboard and preferred playing theatre overtures by ear. Following Geyer's death in 1821, Richard was sent to the Kreuzschule, the boarding school of the Dresdner Kreuzkor, at the expense of Geyer's brother. At the age of nine he was hugely impressed by the Gothic elements of Karl Maria von Weber's opera Der Freischutz, which he saw Weber conduct. At this period Wagner entertained ambitions as a playwright. His first creative effort, listed in the Wagner work Wertsickness as WWV1, was a tragedy called Lubald. Begun when he was in school in 1826, the play was strongly influenced by Shakespeare and Goethe. Wagner was determined to set it to music and persuaded his family to allow him music lessons. By 1827, the family had returned to Leipzig. 
Wagner's first lessons in harmony were taken during 1828-31 with Christian Gottlieb Müller. In January 1828 he first heard Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and then, in March, the same composer's Ninth Symphony. Beethoven became a major inspiration, and Wagner wrote a piano transcription of the Ninth Symphony. He was also greatly impressed by a performance of Mozart's Requiem. Wagner's early piano sonatas, and his first attempts at orchestral overtures date from this period. In 1829 he saw a performance by dramatic soprano Wilhelm in Schroeder de Vriend, and she became his ideal of the fusion of drama and music in opera. In Mein Leben, Wagner wrote, when I look back across my entire life I find no event to place beside this in the impression it produced on me, and claimed that the profoundly human and ecstatic performance of this incomparable artist kindled in him an almost demonic fire. In 1831, Wagner enrolled at the Leipzig University, where he became a member of the Saxon student fraternity. He took composition lessons with the Thomas Gantor Theodore Weinlich. Weinlich was so impressed with Wagner's musical ability that he refused any payment for his lessons. He arranged for his pupil's piano sonata in B-flat major to be published as Wagner's Opus I. A year later, Wagner composed his symphony in C major, a Beethovenesque work performed in Prague in 1832 and at the Leipzig Gewandhaus in 1833. He then began to work on an opera, Die Hochzeit, which he never completed. Chapter 2 Section 2 Early Career and Marriage In 1833, Wagner's brother Albert managed to obtain for him a position as choirmaster at the theatre in Würzburg. In the same year, at the age of 20, Wagner composed his first complete opera, Die Fien. This work, which imitated the style of Weber, went unproduced until half a century later, when it was premiered in Munich shortly after the composer's death in 1883. Having returned to Leipzig in 1834, Wagner held a brief appointment as musical director at the Opera House in Magdeburg, during which he wrote Das Liebesverbot, based on Shakespeare's Measure for Measure. This was staged at Magdeburg in 1836 but closed before the second performance, this, together with the financial collapse of the theatre company employing him, left the composer in bankruptcy. Wagner had fallen for one of the leading ladies at Magdeburg, the actress Christine Wilhelmin Minna Plainer, and after the disaster of Das Liebesverbot he followed her to Königsberg, where she helped him to get an engagement at the theatre. The two married in Tragheim Church on 24 November 1836. In May 1837, Minna left Wagner for another man, and this was but only the first debacle of a tempestuous marriage. In June 1837, Wagner moved to Riga, where he became music director of the local opera, having in this capacity engaged Minna's sister Amelie for the theatre, he presently resumed relations with Minna during 1838. By 1839, the couple had amassed such large debts that they fled Riga on the run from creditors. Debts would plague Wagner for most of his life. Initially they took a stormy sea passage to London, from which Wagner drew the inspiration for his opera Der Fliegende Hollander, with a plot based on a sketch by Heinrich Heine. The Wagners settled in Paris in September 1839, and stayed there until 1842. Wagner made a scant living by writing articles and short novelettes such as A Pilgrimage to Beethoven, which sketched his growing concept of music drama, and An End in Paris, where he depicts his own miseries as a German musician in the French metropolis. He also provided arrangements of operas by other composers, largely on behalf of the Schlesinger Publishing House. During this stay he completed his third and fourth operas Rienzi and Der Fliegende Hollander. Chapter 2 Section 3, Dresden Wagner had completed Rienzi in 1840. With the strong support of Giacomo Meyerbeer, it was accepted for performance by the Dresden Court Theatre in the Kingdom of Saxony and in 1842, Wagner moved to Dresden. His relief at returning to Germany was recorded in his autobiographic sketch of 1842, where he wrote that, en route from Paris, for the first time I saw the Rhine, with hot tears in my eyes, I, poor artist, swore eternal fidelity to my German fatherland. 
Rienzi was staged to considerable acclaim on 20 October. Wagner lived in Dresden for the next six years, eventually being appointed the Royal Saxon Court Conductor. During this period, he staged the Der Fliegende Hollander and Tannhauser, the first two of his three middle period operas. Wagner also mixed with artistic circles in Dresden, including the composer Ferdinand Hiller and the architect Gottfried Semper. Wagner's involvement in left wing politics abruptly ended his welcome in Dresden. Wagner was active among socialist German nationalists there, regularly receiving such guests as the conductor and radical editor August Rockel and the Russian anarchist Mikhail Bakunin. He was also influenced by the ideas of Pierre-Joseph Proudhon and Ludwig Feuerbach. Widespread discontent came to a head in 1849, when the unsuccessful May Uprising in Dresden broke out, in which Wagner played a minor supporting role. Warrants were issued for the revolutionaries' arrest. Wagner had to flee first visiting Paris and then settling in Zurich where he at first took refuge with a friend, Alexander Muller. Chapter 2 Section 4, In Exile, Switzerland Wagner was to spend the next twelve years in exile from Germany. He had completed Lohengrin, the last of his middle-period operas, before the Dresden Uprising, and now wrote desperately to his friend Franz Liszt to have it staged in his absence. Liszt conducted the premiere in Weimar in August 1850. Nevertheless, Wagner was in grim personal straits, isolated from the German musical world and without any regular income. In 1850, Julie, the wife of his friend Karl Ritter, began to pay him a small pension which she maintained until 1859. With help from her friend Jesse Lozot, this was to have been augmented to an annual sum of 3,000 thalers per year but this plan was abandoned when Wagner began an affair with Madame. Lozot. Wagner even planned an elopement with her in 1850, which her husband prevented. Meanwhile, Wagner's wife Minna, who had disliked the operas he had written after Rienzi, was falling into a deepening depression. Wagner fell victim to ill health, according to Ernest Newman largely a matter of overwrought nerves which made it difficult for him to continue writing. Wagner's primary published output during his first years in Zurich was a set of essays. In the artwork of the future, he described a vision of opera's Gesamtkunstwerk, in which the various arts such as music, song, dance, poetry, visual arts and stagecraft were unified. Judaism in music was the first of Wagner's writings to feature anti-Semitic views. In this polemic Wagner argued, frequently using traditional anti-Semitic abuse, that Jews had no connection to the German spirit, and were thus capable of producing only shallow and artificial music. According to him, they composed music to achieve popularity and, thereby, financial success, as opposed to creating genuine works of art. In opera and drama, Wagner described the aesthetics of drama that he was using to create the Ring operas. Before leaving Dresden, Wagner had drafted a scenario that eventually became the four opera cycle Der Ring des Nibelungen. He initially wrote the libretto for a single opera, Siegfried's Todd, in 1848. After arriving in Zurich, he expanded the story with the opera Der Junge Siegfried, which explored the hero's background. He completed the text of the cycle by writing the libretti for Die Valkyra and Das Rheingold and revising the other libretti to agree with his new concept, completing them in 1852. The concept of opera expressed in opera and drama and in other essays effectively renounced the operas he had previously written, up to and including Lohengrin. Partly in an attempt to explain his change of views, Wagner published in 1851 the autobiographical A Communication to My Friends. This contained his first public announcement of what was to become the Ring Cycle. I shall never write an opera more. As I have no wish to invent an arbitrary title for my works, I will call them dramas. I propose to produce my myth in three complete dramas, preceded by a lengthy prelude. At a specially appointed festival, I propose, some future time, to produce those three dramas with their prelude, in the course of three days and a four evening. 
Wagner began composing the music for Das Rheingold between November 1853 and September 1854, following it immediately with Die Valkyra. He began work on the Third Ring Opera, which he now called simply Siegfried, probably in September 1856, but by June 1857 he had completed only the first two acts. He decided to put the work aside to concentrate on a new idea, Tristan and Isolde, based on the Arthurian love story Tristan and Isot. One source of inspiration for Tristan and Isolde was the philosophy of Arthur Schopenhauer, notably his The World as Will and Representation, to which Wagner had been introduced in 1854 by his poet friend Georg Herwer. Wagner later called this the most important event of his life. His personal circumstances certainly made him an easy convert to what he understood to be Schopenhauer's philosophy, a deeply pessimistic view of the human condition. He remained an adherent of Schopenhauer for the rest of his life. One of Schopenhauer's doctrines was that music held a supreme role in the arts as a direct expression of the world's essence, namely, blind, impulsive will. This doctrine contradicted Wagner's view, expressed in opera and drama, that the music in opera had to be subservient to the drama. Wagner scholars have argued that Schopenhauer's influence caused Wagner to assign a more commanding role to music in his later operas, including the latter half of the Ring Cycle, which he had yet to compose. Aspects of Schopenhauerian doctrine found their way into Wagner's subsequent libretti. A second source of inspiration was Wagner's infatuation with the poet writer Mathilde Wiesendonck, the wife of the silk merchant Otto Wiesendonck. Wagner met the Wiesendonks, who were both great admirers of his music, in Zurich in 1852. From May 1853 onwards, Wiesendonck made several loans to Wagner to finance his household expenses in Zurich and in 1857 placed a cottage on his estate at Wagner's disposal, which became known as the Assil. During this period, Wagner's growing passion for his patron's wife inspired him to put aside work on the Ring Cycle and begin work on Tristan. While planning the opera, Wagner composed the Wiesendont Lieder, five songs for voice and piano, setting poems by Mathilde. Two of these settings are explicitly subtitled by Wagner as studies for Tristan and Isolde. Amongst the conducting engagements that Wagner undertook for revenue during this period, he gave several concerts in 1855 with the Philharmonic Society of London, including one before Queen Victoria. The Queen enjoyed his Tannhauser overture and spoke with Wagner after the concert, writing of him in her diary that he was short, very quiet, wears spectacles and has a very finely developed forehead, a hooked nose and projecting chin. Chapter 2 Section 5, In Exile, Venice and Paris Wagner's uneasy affair with Mathilde collapsed in 1858, when Minna intercepted a letter to Mathilde from him. After the resulting confrontation with Minna, Wagner left Zurich alone, bound for Venice, where he rented an apartment in the Palazzo Giustinian, while Minna returned to Germany. Wagner's attitude to Minna had changed, the editor of his correspondence with her, John Burke, has said that she was to him an invalid, to be treated with kindness and consideration, but, except at a distance, a menace to his peace of mind. Wagner continued his correspondence with Mathilde and his friendship with her husband Otto, who maintained his financial support of the composer. In an 1859 letter to Mathilde, Wagner wrote, half satirically, of Tristan, child. This Tristan is turning into something terrible. This final act. I fear the opera will be banned, only mediocre performances can save me. Perfectly good ones will be bound to drive people mad. In November 1859, Wagner once again moved to Paris to oversee production of a new revision of Tannhauser, staged thanks to the efforts of Princess Pauline von Metternich, whose husband was the Austrian ambassador in Paris. The performances of the Paris Tannhauser in 1861 were a notable fiasco. This was partly a consequence of the conservative tastes of the Jockey Club, which organized demonstrations in the theatre to protest at the presentation of the ballet feature in Act I, but the opportunity was also exploited by those who wanted to use the occasion as a veiled political protest against the pro-Austrian policies of Napoleon III. It was during this visit that Wagner met the French poet Charles Baudelaire, 
who wrote an appreciative brochure, Richard Wagner et Tannhauser are Paris. The opera was withdrawn after the third performance and Wagner left Paris soon after. He had sought a reconciliation with Minna during this Paris visit, and although she joined him there, the reunion was not successful and they again parted from each other when Wagner left. Chapter 2 Section 6 Return and Resurgence The political ban that had been placed on Wagner in Germany after he had fled Dresden was fully lifted in 1862. The composer settled in Bybridge, on the Rhine near Wiesbaden in Hesse. Here Minna visited him for the last time, they parted irrevocably, though Wagner continued to give financial support to her while she lived in Dresden until her death in 1866. In Bybridge, Wagner at last began work on Die Meistersinger von Nürnberg, his only mature comedy. Wagner wrote a first draft of the libretto in 1845, and he had resolved to develop it during a visit he had made to Venice with the Wesendunks in 1860, where he was inspired by Titian's painting The Assumption of the Virgin. Throughout this period Wagner sought to have Tristan und Isolde produced in Vienna. Despite numerous rehearsals, the opera remained unperformed, and gained a reputation as being impossible to sing, which added to Wagner's financial problems. Wagner's fortunes took a dramatic upturn in 1864, when King Ludwig II succeeded to the throne of Bavaria, at the age of 18. The young king, an ardent admirer of Wagner's operas, had the composer brought to Munich. The king, who was homosexual, expressed in his correspondence a passionate personal adoration for the composer, and Wagner in his responses had no scruples about counterfeiting a similar atmosphere. Ludwig settled Wagner's considerable debts, and proposed to stage Tristan, Die Meistersinger, The Ring, and the other operas Wagner planned. Wagner also began to dictate his autobiography, Mein Leben, at the king's request. Wagner noted that his rescue by Ludwig coincided with news of the death of his earlier mentor Giacomo Meyerbeer, and regretted that this operatic master, who had done me so much harm, should not have lived to see this day. After grave difficulties in rehearsal, Tristan and Isolde premiered at the National Theatre Munich on 10 June 1865, the first Wagner opera premiere in almost 15 years. The conductor of this premiere was Hans von Bülow, whose wife, Cosima, had given birth in April that year to a daughter, named Isolde, a child not of Bülow but of Wagner. Cosima was 24 years younger than Wagner and was herself illegitimate, the daughter of the Countess Marie de Gouot, who had left her husband for Franz Liszt. Liszt initially disapproved of his daughter's involvement with Wagner, though nevertheless, the two men were friends. The indiscreet affair scandalized Munich, and Wagner also fell into disfavor with many leading members of the court, who were suspicious of his influence on the king. In December 1865, Ludwig was finally forced to ask the composer to leave Munich. He apparently also toyed with the idea of abdicating to follow his hero into exile, but Wagner quickly dissuaded him. Ludwig installed Wagner at the Villa Treibsken, beside Switzerland's Lake Lucerne. Die Meistersinger was completed at Treibsken in 1867, and premiered in Munich on 21 June the following year. At Ludwig's insistence, special previews of the first two works of The Ring, Das Rheingold, and Die Valkyra, were performed at Munich in 1869 and 1870, but Wagner retained his dream, first expressed in a communication to my friends, to present the first complete cycle at a special festival with a new, dedicated, opera house. Minna had died of a heart attack on 25 January 1866 in Dresden. Wagner did not attend the funeral. Following Minna's death Cosima wrote to Hans von Bülow on a number of occasions asking him to grant her a divorce, but Bülow refused to concede this. He consented only after she had two more children with Wagner, another daughter, named Eva, after the heroine of Meistersinger, and a son Siegfried, named for the hero of the ring. The divorce was finally sanctioned, after delays in the legal process, by a Berlin court on 18 July 1870. Richard and Cosima's wedding took place on 25 August 1870. On Christmas Day of that year, Wagner arranged a surprise performance of the Siegfried Idyll for Cosima's birthday. 
The marriage to Cosima lasted to the end of Wagner's life. Wagner, settled into his newfound domesticity, turned his energies towards completing the ring cycle. He had not abandoned polemics, he republished his 1850 pamphlet Judaism in Music, originally issued under a pseudonym, under his own name in 1869. He extended the introduction, and wrote a lengthy additional final section. The publication led to several public protests at early performances of Die Meistersinger in Vienna and Mannheim. Chapter 2 Section 7, Beirut In 1871, Wagner decided to move to Beirut, which was to be the location of his new opera house. The town council donated a large plot of land, the Green Hill as a site for the theatre. The Wagners moved to the town the following year, and the foundation stone for the Beirut Fest Spielhaus was laid. Wagner initially announced the first Beirut festival, at which for the first time the ring cycle would be presented complete, for 1873, but since Ludwig had declined to finance the project, the start of building was delayed and the proposed date for the festival was deferred. To raise funds for the construction, Wagner societies were formed in several cities, and Wagner began touring Germany conducting concerts. By the spring of 1873, only a third of the required funds had been raised, further pleas to Ludwig were initially ignored, but early in 1874, with the project on the verge of collapse, the king relented and provided a loan. The full building program included the family home, Wahnfried, into which Wagner, with Cosima and the children, moved from their temporary accommodation on the 18th of April 1874. The theatre was completed in 1875, and the festival scheduled for the following year. Commenting on the struggle to finish the building, Wagner remarked to Cosima, each stone is red with my blood and yours. For the design of the Festspielhaus, Wagner appropriated some of the ideas of his former colleague, Gottfried Semper, which he had previously solicited for a proposed new opera house at Munich. Wagner was responsible for several theatrical innovations at Beirut, these include darkening the auditorium during performances, and placing the orchestra in a pit out of view of the audience. The Festspielhaus finally opened on 13 August 1876 with Das Rheingold, at last taking its place as the first evening of the complete ring cycle. The 1876 Beirut Festival therefore saw the premiere of the complete cycle, performed as a sequence as the composer had intended. The 1876 festival consisted of three full ring cycles. At the end, critical reactions ranged between that of the Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg, who thought the work divinely composed, and that of the French newspaper Le Figaro, which called the music the dream of a lunatic. Amongst the disillusioned were Wagner's friend and disciple Friedrich Nietzsche, who, having published his eulogistic essay Richard Wagner in Beirut before the festival as part of his untimely meditations, was bitterly disappointed by what he saw as Wagner's pandering to increasingly exclusivist German nationalism, his breach with Wagner began at this time. The festival firmly established Wagner as an artist of European, and indeed world, importance, attendees included Kaiser Wilhelm I, the Emperor Pedro II of Brazil, Anton Bruckner, Camille Sansons and Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Wagner was far from satisfied with the festival, Cosima recorded that months later, his attitude towards the productions was never again, never again. Moreover, the festival finished with a deficit of about 150,000 marks. The expenses of Beirut and of Wanfried meant that Wagner still sought additional sources of income by conducting or taking on commissions such as the Centennial March for America, for which he received $5,000. Chapter 2 Section 8, Last Years Following the first Beirut festival, Wagner began work on Parsifal, his final opera. The composition took four years, much of which Wagner spent in Italy for health reasons. From 1876 to 1878 Wagner also embarked on the last of his documented emotional liaisons, this time with Judith Gautier, whom he had met at the 1876 festival. Wagner was also much troubled by problems of financing Parsifal, and by the prospect of the work being performed by other theatres than Beirut. He was once again assisted by the liberality of King Ludwig, 
but was still forced by his personal financial situation in 1877 to sell the rights of several of his unpublished works to the publisher Schott. Wagner wrote a number of articles in his later years, often on political topics, and often reactionary in tone, repudiating some of his earlier, more liberal, views. These include religion and art and heroism, and Christianity, which were printed in the journal Bayreuth of Later, published by his supporter Hans von Walsergen. Wagner's sudden interest in Christianity at this period, which infuses Parsifal, was contemporary with his increasing alignment with German nationalism, and required on his part, and the part of his associates, the rewriting of some recent Wagnerian history, so as to represent, for example, the Ring as a work reflecting Christian ideals. Many of these later articles, including What is German? Repeated Wagner's anti-Semitic preoccupations. Wagner completed Parsifal in January 1882, and a second Beirut festival was held for the new opera, which premiered on 26 May. Wagner was by this time extremely ill, having suffered a series of increasingly severe angina attacks. During the 16th and final performance of Parsifal on 29 August, he entered the pit unseen during Act 3, took the baton from conductor Hermann Levi, and led the performance to its conclusion. After the festival, the Wagner family journeyed to Venice for the winter. Wagner died of a heart attack at the age of 69 on 13 February 1883 at C.A. Vendram in Kilergi, a 16th century palazzo on the Grand Canal. The legend that the attack was prompted by argument with Cosima over Wagner's supposedly amorous interest in the singer Carrie Pringle, who had been a flower maiden in Parsifal at Beirut, is without credible evidence. After a funerary gondola bore Wagner's remains over the Grand Canal, his body was taken to Germany where it was buried in the garden of the Villa Wanfried in Beirut. Chapter 2 – Works Wagner's musical output is listed by the Wagner work Wertzigness as comprising 113 works, including fragments and projects. The first complete scholarly edition of his musical works in print was commenced in 1970 under the aegis of the Bavarian Academy of Fine Arts and the Academy der Wissenschaften und der Literatur of Mainz, and is presently under the editorship of Egon Voss. It will consist of 21 volumes of music and 10 volumes of relevant documents and texts. As at October 2017, three volumes remain to be published. The publisher is Shot Music. Chapter 3 Section 1 Operas Wagner's operatic works are his primary artistic legacy. Unlike most opera composers, who generally left the task of writing the libretto to others, Wagner wrote his own libretti, which he referred to as poems. From 1849 onwards, he urged a new concept of opera often referred to as music drama, in which all musical, poetic and dramatic elements were to be fused together, the Gesamtkunstwerk. Wagner developed a compositional style in which the importance of the orchestra is equal to that of the singers. The orchestra's dramatic role in the later operas includes the use of leitmotifs, musical phrases that can be interpreted as announcing specific characters, locales, and plot elements, their complex interweaving and evolution illuminates the progression of the drama. These operas are still, despite Wagner's reservations, referred to by many writers as music dramas. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 1 Early Works Wagner's earliest attempts at opera were often uncompleted. Abandoned works include a pastoral opera based on Goethe's Die Lorn des Verliebten, written at the age of 17, Die Hochzeit, on which Wagner worked in 1832, and the singspiel manalist Grusser ALS Fraunlist. Die Feen was not performed in the composer's lifetime and Das Liebesverbot was withdrawn after its first performance. Rienzi was Wagner's first opera to be successfully staged. The compositional style of these early works was conventional, the relatively more sophisticated Rienzi showing the clear influence of grand opera a la Spontini and Meyerbeer, and did not exhibit the innovations that would mark Wagner's place in musical history. Later in life, Wagner said that he did not consider these works to be part of his oeuvre, and they have been performed only rarely in the last hundred years, although the overture to Rienzi is an occasional concert hall piece. 
Diphene, Das Liebesverbot, and Rienzi were performed at both Leipzig and Beirut in 2013 to mark the composer's bicentenary. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 2, Romantic Operas Wagner's middle stage output began with Der Fliegende Hollander, followed by Tannhauser and Lohengrin. These three operas are sometimes referred to as Wagner's romantic operas. They reinforced the reputation, among the public in Germany and beyond, that Wagner had begun to establish with Rienzi. Although distancing himself from the style of these operas from 1849 onwards, he nevertheless reworked both Der Fliegende Hollander and Tannhauser on several occasions. These three operas are considered to represent a significant developmental stage in Wagner's musical and operatic maturity as regards thematic handling, portrayal of emotions and orchestration. They are the earliest works included in the Beirut canon, the mature operas that Cosima staged at the Beirut festival after Wagner's death in accordance with his wishes. All three continue to be regularly performed throughout the world, and have been frequently recorded. They were also the operas by which his fame spread, during his lifetime. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 3 Music Dramas Equals Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 4 Starting the Ring Equals Wagner's late dramas are considered his masterpieces. Der Ring der Nibelungen, commonly referred to as the Ring or Ring Cycle, is a set of four operas based loosely on figures and elements of Germanic mythology, particularly from the later Norse mythology, notably the Old Norse poetic Edda and Vulsunga saga, and the Middle High German Nibelungenlied. Wagner specifically developed the libretti for these operas according to his interpretation of Stabrium, highly alliterative rhyming verse pairs used in Old Germanic poetry. They were also influenced by Wagner's concepts of ancient Greek drama, in which tetralogies were a component of Athenian festivals, and which he had amply discussed in his essay Opera und Drama. The first two components of the Ring Cycle were Das Rheingold, which was completed in 1854, and Die Valkyra, which was finished in 1856. In Das Rheingold, with its relentlessly talky realism the absence of lyrical numbers, Wagner came very close to the musical ideals of his 1849-51 essays. Die Valkyra, which contains what is virtually a traditional aria, and the quasi-choral appearance of the Valkyries themselves, shows more operatic traits, but has been assessed by Barry Millington as the music drama that most satisfactorily embodies the theoretical principles of opera and drama. A thoroughgoing synthesis of poetry and music is achieved without any notable sacrifice in musical expression. Equals Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 5 Tristan and Isolde, and Die Meistersinger equals. While composing the opera Siegfried, the third part of the Ring Cycle, Wagner interrupted work on it, and between 1857 and 1864 wrote the tragic love story Tristan und Isolde and his only mature comedy Die Meistersinger von Nürnberg, two works that are also part of the regular operatic canon. Tristan is often granted a special place in musical history, Many see it as the beginning of the move away from conventional harmony and tonality and consider that it lays the groundwork for the direction of classical music in the 20th century. Wagner felt that his musico-dramatical theories were most perfectly realized in this work with its use of the art of transition between dramatic elements and the balance achieved between vocal and orchestral lines. Completed in 1859, the work was given its first performance in Munich, conducted by Bülow, in June 1865, Die Meistersinger was originally conceived by Wagner in 1845 as a sort of comic pendant to Tannhauser. Like Tristan, it was premiered in Munich under the Baton of Bülow on the 21st of June 1868 and became an immediate success. Barry Millington describes Meistersinger as a rich, perceptive music drama widely admired for its warm humanity, but because of its strong German nationalist overtones. It is also cited by some as an example of Wagner's reactionary politics and anti-Semitism. Equals Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 6, Completing the Ring Equals When Wagner returned to writing the music for the last act of Siegfried and for Gotterdammerung, as the final part of the ring, 
His style had changed once more to something more recognizable, as operatic than the oral world of Rheingold, and Valkyra, though it was still thoroughly stamped with his own originality as a composer and suffused with leitmotifs. This was in part because the libretti of the four ring operas had been written in reverse order, so that the book for Gotterdammerung was conceived more traditionally than that of Rheingold, still, the self-imposed strictures of the Gesamtkunstwerk had become relaxed. The differences also result from Wagner's development as a composer during the period in which he wrote Tristan, Meistersinger and the Paris version of Tannhauser. From Act Three of Siegfried onwards, the ring becomes more chromatic melodically, more complex harmonically and more developmental in its treatment of leitmotifs. Wagner took 26 years from writing the first draft of a libretto in 1848 until he completed Gotterdammerung in 1874. The ring takes about 15 hours to perform and is the only undertaking of such size to be regularly presented on the world's stages. Equals chapter 3 section 2 subsection 7, Parsifal equals. Wagner's final opera, Parsifal, which was his only work written especially for his Beirut Festspielhaus and which is described in the score as a boon and by Festspiel, has a storyline suggested by elements of the legend of the Holy Grail. It also carries elements of Buddhist renunciation suggested by Wagner's readings of Schopenhauer. Wagner described it to Cosima as his last card. It remains controversial because of its treatment of Christianity, its eroticism, and its expression, as perceived by some commentators, of German nationalism, and anti-Semitism. Despite the composer's own description of the opera to King Ludwig as this most Christian of works, Ulrike Kiensley has commented that Wagner's turn to Christian mythology, upon which the imagery and spiritual contents of Parsifal rest, is idiosyncratic and contradicts Christian dogma in many ways. Musically the opera has been held to represent a continuing development of the composer's style, and Barry Millington describes it as a diaphanous score of unearthly beauty and refinement. Chapter 3 Section 2 Non-Operatic Music Apart from his operas, Wagner composed relatively few pieces of music. These include a symphony in C major, the Faust Overture, some concert overtures, and choral and piano pieces. His most commonly performed work that is not an extract from an opera is the Siegfried Idel for Chamber Orchestra, which has several motifs in common with the Ring Cycle. The Wiesendont Lieder are also often performed, either in the original piano version, or with orchestral accompaniment. More rarely performed are the American Centennial March, and Das Liebesmahl der Apostel, a piece for male choruses and orchestra composed in 1843 for the city of Dresden. After completing Parsifal, Wagner expressed his intention to turn to the writing of symphonies, and several sketches dating from the late 1870s and early 1880s have been identified as work towards this end. The overtures and certain orchestral passages from Wagner's middle and late stage operas are commonly played as concert pieces. For most of these, Wagner wrote or rewrote short passages to ensure musical coherence. The bridal chorus from Lohengrin is frequently played as the bride's processional wedding march in English-speaking countries. Chapter 3 Section 3 Prose Writings Wagner was an extremely prolific writer, authoring numerous books, poems, and articles, as well as voluminous correspondence. His writings covered a wide range of topics, including autobiography, politics, philosophy, and detailed analyses of his own operas. Wagner planned for a collected edition of his publications as early as 1865, he believed that such an edition would help the world understand his intellectual development and artistic aims. The first such edition was published between 1871 and 1883, but was doctored to suppress or alter articles that were an embarrassment to him, or by altering dates on some articles to reinforce Wagner's own account of his progress. Wagner's autobiography Mein Leben, was originally published for close friends only in a very small edition in four volumes between 1870 and 1880. The first public edition appeared in 1911, the first attempt at a full edition appeared in 1963. There have been modern complete or partial editions of Wagner's writings, including a centennial edition in German edited by Dieter Borchmeier. 
The English translations of Wagner's prose in eight volumes by W. Ashton Ellis are still in print and commonly used, despite their deficiencies. The first complete historical and critical edition of Wagner's prose works was launched in 2013 at the Institute for Music Research at the University of Würzburg, this will result in 16 volumes totaling approximately 5,300 pages. It is anticipated that the project will be completed by 2030. A complete edition of Wagner's correspondence, estimated to amount to between 10,000 and 12,000 items, is underway under the supervision of the University of Würzburg. As of October 2017, 23 volumes have appeared, covering the period to 1873. Chapter 3 Influence and Legacy. Chapter 4 Section 1 Influence on Music. Wagner's later musical style introduced new ideas in harmony, melodic process, and operatic structure. Notably from Tristan and Isolde onwards, he explored the limits of the traditional tonal system, which gave keys and chords their identity, pointing the way to atonality in the 20th century. Some music historians date the beginning of modern classical music to the first notes of Tristan, which include the so-called Tristan chord. Wagner inspired great devotion. For a long period, many composers were inclined to align themselves with or against Wagner's music. Anton Bruckner and Hugo Wolf were greatly indebted to him, as were César Frank, Henri Duparc, Ernest Chausson, Jules Massenet, Richard Strauss, Alexander von Semlinsky, Hans Pitzner and numerous others. Gustav Mahler was devoted to Wagner and his music, aged 15, he sought him out on his 1875 visit to Vienna, became a renowned Wagner conductor, and his compositions are seen by Richard Taruskin as extending Wagner's maximalization of the temporal, and the sonorous in music to the world of the symphony. The harmonic revolutions of Claude Debussy and Arnold Schoenberg have often been traced back to Tristan and Parsifal. The Italian form of operatic realism known as Verismo owed much to the Wagnerian concept of musical form. Wagner made a major contribution to the principles and practice of conducting. His essay about conducting advanced Hector Berlioz's technique of conducting and claimed that conducting was a means by which a musical work could be reinterpreted rather than simply a mechanism for achieving orchestral unison. He exemplified this approach in his own conducting, which was significantly more flexible than the disciplined approach of Felix Mendelssohn, in his view this also justified practices that would today be frowned upon, such as the rewriting of scores. Wilhelm Furtwängler felt that Wagner and Bülow, through their interpretative approach, inspired a whole new generation of conductors. Amongst those claiming inspiration from Wagner's music are the German band Rammstein, and the electronic composer Klaus Schulze, whose 1975 album Timewind consists of two 30-minute tracks, Beirut Return and Wanfried 1883. Joey DeMeo of the band Manowar has described Wagner as the father of heavy metal. The Slovenian group Liebach created the 2009 Sweet Volks Wagner, using material from Wagner's operas. Phil Spector's wall of sound recording technique was, it has been claimed, heavily influenced by Wagner. Chapter 4 Section 2, Influence on Literature, Philosophy and the Visual Arts Wagner's influence on literature and philosophy is significant. Millington has commented, protein abundance meant that he could inspire the use of literary motif in many a novel employing interior monologue, the symbolists saw him as a mystic hierophant, the decadents found many a frisson in his work. Friedrich Nietzsche was a member of Wagner's inner circle during the early 1870s, and his first published work, The Birth of Tragedy, proposed Wagner's music as the Dionysian rebirth of European culture in opposition to Apollonian rationalist decadence. Nietzsche broke with Wagner following the first Beirut festival, believing that Wagner's final phase represented a pandering to Christian pieties and a surrender to the new German Reich. Nietzsche expressed his displeasure with the later Wagner in the case of Wagner and Nietzsche contra Wagner. The poets Charles Baudelaire, Stéphane Mallarmé and Paul Verlaine worshipped Wagner. Édouard Dujardin, whose influential novel Les Lauriers on Coupes is in the form of an interior monologue inspired by Wagnerian music, 
founded a journal dedicated to Wagner, La Revue Wagnerienne, to which J. K. Weissman and Theodore de Wise were contributed. In a list of major cultural figures influenced by Wagner, Brian McGee includes D. H. Lawrence, Aubrey Beardsley, Roman Roland, Gerard de Nerval, Pierre Auguste Renoir, Rainer Maria Rilke, and numerous others. In the 20th century, W. H. Auden once called Wagner perhaps the greatest genius that ever lived, while Thomas Mann and Marcel Proust were heavily influenced by him and discussed Wagner in their novels. He is also discussed in some of the works of James Joyce. Wagnerian themes inhabit T. S. Eliot's The Waste Land, which contains lines from Tristan und Isolde and Gotterdammerung, and Verlaine's poem on Parsifal. Many of Wagner's concepts, including his speculation about dreams, predated their investigation by Sigmund Freud. Wagner had publicly analyzed the Oedipus myth before Freud was born in terms of its psychological significance, insisting that incestuous desires are natural and normal, and perceptively exhibiting the relationship between sexuality and anxiety. Georg Grodig considered The Ring as the first manual of psychoanalysis. Chapter 4 Section 3 Influence on Cinema Wagner's concept of the use of leitmotifs and the integrated musical expression which they can enable has influenced many 20th and 21st century film scores. The critic Theodore Adorno has noted that the Wagnerian leitmotif leads directly to cinema music where the sole function of the leitmotif is to announce heroes or situations, so as to allow the audience to orient itself more easily. Amongst film scores citing Wagnerian themes are Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now, which features a version of The Ride of the Valkyries, Trevor Jones's soundtrack to John Borman's film Excalibur, and the 2011 films A Dangerous Method and Melancholia. Hans Jürgen Sieberberg's 1977 film Hitler, a film from Germany's visual style and set design are strongly inspired by Der Ring der Nibelungen, musical excerpts from which are frequently used in the film's soundtrack. Chapter 4 Section 4 Opponents and Supporters Not all reaction to Wagner was positive. For a time, German musical life divided into two factions, supporters of Wagner and supporters of Johannes Brahms, the latter, with the support of the powerful critic Eduard Hanslick championed traditional forms, and led the conservative front against Wagnerian innovations. They were supported by the conservative leanings of some German music schools, including the conservatories at Leipzig under Ignaz Moscheles and at Cologne under the direction of Ferdinand Hiller. Another Wagner detractor was the French composer Charles Valentin Alken, who wrote to Hiller after attending Wagner's Paris concert on 25 January 1860 at which Wagner conducted the overtures to Der Fliegende Hollander, and Tannhauser, the preludes to Lohengrin and Tristan und Isolde, and six other extracts from Tannhauser and Lohengrin, I had imagined that I was going to meet music of an innovative kind but was astonished to find a pale imitation of Berlioz. I do not like all the music of Berlioz while appreciating his marvellous understanding of certain instrumental effects, but here he was imitated and caricatured, Wagner is not a musician, he is a disease. Even those who, like Debussy, opposed Wagner could not deny his influence. Indeed, Debussy was one of many composers, including Tchaikovsky, who felt the need to break with Wagner precisely because his influence was so unmistakable and overwhelming. Gollywog's cakewalk from Debussy's Children's Corner Piano Suite contains a deliberately tongue-in-cheek quotation from the opening bars of Tristan. Others who proved resistant to Wagner's operas included Gioacchino Rossini, who said Wagner has wonderful moments, and dreadful quarters of an hour. In the 20th century Wagner's music was parodied by Paul Hindemith, and Hans Eisler, among others. Wagner's followers have formed many societies dedicated to Wagner's life and work. Chapter 4 Section 5, Film and Stage Portrayals Wagner has been the subject of many biographical films. The earliest was a silent film made by Karl Froelich in 1913 and featured in the title role the composer Giuseppe Becchi, who also wrote the score for the film. Amongst other film portrayals of Wagner are, Alan Bedell in Magic Fire, Lyndon Brook in Song Without End, Trevor Howard in Ludwig, 
Paul Nicholas in Listomania, and Richard Burton in Wagner. Jonathan Harvey's opera Wagner Dream intertwines the events surrounding Wagner's death with the story of Wagner's uncompleted opera outline Die Sieger. Chapter 4 Section 6, Beirut Festival Since Wagner's death, the Beirut Festival, which has become an annual event, has been successively directed by his widow, his son Siegfried, the latter's widow Winifred Wagner, their two sons Wieland and Wolfgang Wagner, and, presently, two of the composer's great-granddaughters, Eva Wagner Pasquier and Katharina Wagner. Since 1973, the festival has been overseen by the Richard Wagner Stiftung, the members of which include a number of Wagner's descendants. Chapter 4, Controversies Wagner's operas, writings, politics, beliefs and unorthodox lifestyle made him a controversial figure during his lifetime. Following his death, debate about his ideas and their interpretation, particularly in Germany during the 20th century, has continued. Chapter 5 Section 1, Racism and Antisemitism Wagner's hostile writings on Jews, including Jewishness in music, corresponded to some existing trends of thought in Germany during the 19th century, however, despite his very public views on these themes, throughout his life Wagner had Jewish friends, colleagues and supporters. There have been frequent suggestions that anti-Semitic stereotypes are represented in Wagner's operas. The characters of Alberic and Mime in The Ring, Sixtus Beckmesser in Die Meistersinger, and Klingsor in Parsifal are sometimes claimed as Jewish representations, though they are not identified as such in the librettos of these operas. The topic of Wagner and the Jews is further complicated by allegations, which may have been credited by Wagner, that he himself was of Jewish ancestry, via his supposed father Geir. Some biographers have noted that Wagner in his final years developed interest in the racialist philosophy of Arthur de Gobineau, notably Gobineau's belief that Western society was doomed because of miscegenation between superior and inferior races. According to Robert Gutman, this theme is reflected in the opera Parsifal. Other biographers believe that this is not true, as the original drafts of the story date back to 1857 and Wagner had completed the libretto for Parsifal by 1877, but he displayed no significant interest in Gobineau until 1880. Chapter 5 Section 2 Other Interpretations Wagner's ideas are amenable to socialist interpretations, many of his ideas on art were being formulated at the time of his revolutionary inclinations in the 1840s. Thus, for example, George Bernard Shaw wrote in The Perfect Wagnerite. Picture of Nibelungholm under the reign of Albaic is a poetic vision of unregulated industrial capitalism as it was made known in Germany in the middle of the 19th century by Engels's book The Condition of the Working Class in England. Left-wing interpretations of Wagner also inform the writings of Theodore Adorno among other Wagner critics. Walter Benjamin gave Wagner as an example of bourgeois false consciousness, alienating art from its social context, the writer Robert Donington has produced a detailed, if controversial, Jungian interpretation of the ring cycle, described as an approach to Wagner by way of his symbols, which, for example, sees the character of the goddess Fricka as part of her husband Wotan's inner femininity. Millington notes that Jean-Jacques Natiez has also applied psychoanalytical techniques in an evaluation of Wagner's life and works. Chapter 5 Section 3, Nazi Appropriation Adolf Hitler was an admirer of Wagner's music and saw in his operas an embodiment of his own vision of the German nation, in a 1922 speech he claimed that Wagner's works glorified the heroic Teutonic nature, greatness lies in the heroic. Hitler visited Beirut frequently from 1923 onwards and attended the productions at the theatre. There continues to be debate about the extent to which Wagner's views might have influenced Nazi thinking. Houston Stuart Chamberlain, who married Wagner's daughter Eva in 1908 but never met Wagner, was the author of the racist book The Foundations of the Nineteenth Century, approved by the Nazi movement. Chamberlain met Hitler on a number of occasions between 1923 and 1927 in Beirut, but cannot credibly be regarded as a conduit of Wagner's own views. 
The Nazis used those parts of Wagner's thought that were useful for propaganda and ignored or suppressed the rest. While Beirut presented a useful front for Nazi culture, and Wagner's music was used at many Nazi events. The Nazi hierarchy as a whole did not share Hitler's enthusiasm for Wagner's operas and resented attending these lengthy epics at Hitler's insistence. Guido Fackler has researched evidence that indicates that it is possible that Wagner's music was used at the Dachau concentration camp in 1933-34 to re-educate political prisoners by exposure to national music. There has been no evidence to support claims, sometimes made, that his music was played at Nazi death camps during the Second World War, and Pamela Potter has noted that Wagner's music was explicitly off limits in the camps. Because of the associations of Wagner with anti Semitism and Nazism, the performance of his music in the State of Israel has been a source of controversy. Chapter 5, Section 4 Sources. Chapter 5, Section 5 Operas. Richard Wagner Opera, Richard Wagner Operas. Wagner Interviews, CDs, DVDs, Wagner Calendar, Beirut Festival. Wagner Operas, site featuring photographs, video, MIDI files, scores, libretti, and commentary. Ruana.net, contains libretti of his operas, with English translations. Wagner Website, assortment of articles on Wagner and his operas. Wilhelm Richard Wagner site by Stanford University. The Wagnerian, Richard Wagner News, Operas, Reviews, Articles. Chapter 5 Section 6, Scores. Three scores by Richard Wagner in the Choral Public Domain Library. Three scores by Richard Wagner at the International Music Score Library Project.